Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to wrap up this week's theme of New Wave, checking out a band called Diva Destruction. Interestingly, this must be a New Wave revival band, because from what I can tell, everything we've listened to this week came out of the 80s ish and this is relatively new with this album coming out in 2006 the album in question is run cold we're going to be looking at the second track off of it called rewriting history let's see what diva destruction is bringing to the table Okay, so that's the, the hi-hat bit is interesting because it is consistent through the whole song. Actually, the hi-hat and the bass kick are both consistent. It's just a snare that comes in on the chorus. Some things that are lining up with New Wave compositionally. Still trying to piece this together sonically. Okay, yeah, things are starting to make a little bit more sense here. It's interesting, we have a synth off to the left. 
and a distorted guitar on the right. Do we have a bass guitar? I'm I'm glad we had this this week. It's uh We'll talk about its placement in genre later. Let's dig into the music first and see what's going on here. There's a lot of ideas that are consistent from our verse to our chorus. I pointed out the hi-hat and bass kick that does not change. The only difference in the drum kit is when we get to the chorus, we get an additional snare on the backbeat, two and four. Um, our hi-hats are consistently on the off beats, almost giving it a bit of an upbeat vibe that is semi-reminiscent of what we heard in the Police's song uh, on Monday. We have a guitar riff. I think it's just one guitar riff, actually, um, during our chorus. In our verse, where the guitar's placement is sonically, which is off to the right, we just have this low sound that sort of has a waviness to it uh, and a crackle, like a bubbling it could very well be the guitar. To me, it sounds uh, like a synth, but I mean, when it comes to electronic alterations of sounds, we the bass instrument very rarely matters anymore. <laughs> anything can become in, anything in the modern day. Um, we do have a synth playing a variation on our lead vocal melody in our chorus. But in the verse, there wasn't a synth? I, I can't remember. The verse is very sparse. I know that. Uh, the instruments are very spaced out. Um, there's plenty of room between all the instruments. It, it doesn't have that same sparseness feel that a lot of the new wave we've listened to this week does but there's still that separation between voices. We hit a bridge, four bars tops, with a... And we shift the tone on the electric guitar into something cleaner and meeker. If I will say, it's, it's, it's a very weak sound, uh, comparatively so, to that massive tone we get in the chorus and we don't do it for very long before wrapping us back to our chorus final chorus that that's the whole song <laughs> there is one production thing i want to bring up i think it's important a separation of our vocals, not so much in the verse, but certainly in the chorus, where they are separated, as I stated. They don't exist in the mono space. They are not specifically center channel. They're not pushed out to the sides. They're sort of like a 45 degree angle to either side of the center. Um, but for those who somehow watch every video I put out which massive kudos if you do I don't expect anyone to um this is sounds familiar I've spoken about this this week we're going to touch on that in a little bit though but 
but I think that's really it. I don't, it's, it's got a spooky vibe to it. It's got like a, a haunting vibe. It's kind of gothy would actually be the way I would describe it. And I've been laying these breadcrumbs. If you've been picking them up, you know where I'm going with this. This, to me, feels like a modern exploration of what Su Susie and the Banshees did. And I, that's why I mentioned that I'm really glad we got around to this. Not just because it's a modern uh, new wave track, but because it specifically looks at one style of new wave that we, up until this point, had only checked out once. It felt like an outlier. Uh, and it's going to help me speak a little bit uh, about New Wave, especially in what I've been learning through all of you and your comments on both YouTube and Discord. This features the separation of voices that I've talked about all week. There's a very clear production here. In fact, it's hyper panned where instruments are fully right or left panned like we've seen in quite a few tracks, which may have just been the times, but it's now the sound of new wave as well. There's a simplicity to the song where the overall vibe and even in this case and a few cases this week, Ideas don't even change between the verse and the chorus. A running uh, gag, I've, well not really a gag, just a running observation I've made is that I have, a, I have trouble finding the differentiations between verse and chorus. It's usually more lyrical than musical. Um, and this is absolutely no different. Like I said, the drums, the only difference is they put a snare on two and four. Otherwise, the snare plays the exact, or the drum kit plays the exact same thing from start to finish on this track. There's a lot of elements that just don't change. The overall vibe remi remains spooky from start to finish. Um, we always have, other than our bridge, a big, wide, booming lower end tone, whether it is what I think is a synth in the verse or our guitar tone in the chorus. And much like uh, Susie and Police and not Talking Heads, but yes, what did we check yesterday? Uh, it was a really weird one. Oh yeah, somebody's trying to tell me something. Midnight Oil. Uh, something they all had in common with this track from Diva Destruction is a fake-out bridge. It technically does exist, but it's so short, can we even really call it a section? It is a new idea. In this case, we get a brand new guitar idea, but it's two bars long tops, eight whole beats. Um... Whereas in a couple of the other tracks, I called it a fake out where it felt like we were going to a bridge, but didn't. This just feels like an ultra compact bridge where it does exist. It is technically a new section. We have a brand new idea, but I mean, the underlying ideas are the same. In fact, I'd almost write this off as a unique post chorus than an isolated section on its own before bringing us back into the final chorus. Another thing that ties this together is the separated vocals, something that I picked up on Susie and the Banshees, and uh, several people commented on said that's the vocal production for at least that whole album. I can't remember if uh, people had said that that was the way they always did it, but I clearly remember reading that every song on that album has that vocal production to it. And... I also happened to see a comment that Susie and the Banshees was a kicking off point for goth movements. Uh, and that goth is technically under the new wave umbrella. And this kind of takes me into, well, let me finish this thought right here. This feels like a continuation or a revitalization of that goth style that Susie and the Banshee started. Uh, and like I said, I'm really happy that we got another style or another song in that style because everything else this week kind of fit into um, that brighter sound. Midnight Oil was weird, and that kind of puts it in perspective that possibly that was a 
middle point between the full-on goth that Susie started and the brighter reggae rock stuff that we found in uh, the other two tracks we checked out. Midnight Oil kind of sits right there in the middle where we got two uplifting bright poppy songs, two gothy songs, and one right there in the middle that retained the brightness in tone but the eeriness in texture. You know, it's very cool now. <laughs> I was very confused about it yesterday, but uh, it makes sense now. But all this takes me around to New Wave in general, which the more I talked with people and began to understand stuff about it, New Wave is massive. It's a lot of stuff, actually. It's One person even said that it's kind of just the sounds of the 80s. A lot of things in the 80s get tossed into New Rock. Or, sorry, New Wave. <laughs> um, and I kind of had that idea at the back of my mind, especially with Talking Heads and The Police, that I really didn't hear anything that was too different in those tracks from other contemporary pop songs from the 80s. Um, part of that is just the 80s had a sound. <laughs> Uh, Production-wise, instrument choices, uh, you know, the 80s had a sound. Every genre has a sound. 90s is a very angsty genre, even in the pop realm. We we went to some more, uh, slightly less polished pop, at least comparatively to today. I mean, the 90s is just an angsty time to me. Um, and the 80s are just a bright, a bright sound. That's what the 80s sounds like. So part of, you know, part of it's just that, but... Um, you know, there's this thing at the back of my mind that I couldn't really tell what made this new wave. And the more we listened to stuff, I picked up on some common themes, but the songs never really felt new. like I still don't have any of them categorized as new wave. They, a lot of them are just some 80s songs in my mind. New wave is more of a tag that I've associated retroactively, but that's not how my brain wants to categorize them. Um... But yeah, New Wave just represents a lot of stuff that came out in the 80s. And it's just a new wave of music, I guess, is how I kind of want to uh, mentally think about it. And this new wave had a lot of smaller waves in it. Um, but it has been interesting to find these similarities. I don't know how much of it is just the similarities of 80s music. Maybe all 80s music is, or not all. A majority of the more popular 80s music is highly separated with the on the production side, mostly brighter sounds. Um, maybe a lot of them did do away with the bridge, made them shorter and shorter. I mean, that's something we even still see today, and maybe that's inspiration in modern pop songs to get back to the chorus even quicker comes from something that happened in the 80s, you know, diminishing the importance of the bridge. Um, and it's just, it's been an interesting week, <laughs> um, but I kind of view New Wave as not too dissimilar from, you know, post-rock, post-punk, uh, post-hardcore, in fact, a lot of post-genres, in that they're just these massive, um, even like metalcore, Jazz fusion, these are genres that we did entire weeks for, and I got an entirely different sound than I was expecting because I only knew of a specific era of that genre. And there's just a lot of genres that, at least in my mind, are now becoming these big umbrella terms that kind of don't mean anything anymore. Or I guess that's just to say that they mean so much, it's difficult for them to mean much, specifically. Like, when you say metalcore, I do think of a very specific type of metal. I would never get it confused with black metal, for instance. But metalcore does embody, like, three different movements, and all of them are quite diverse, in so much so that people who enjoy metalcore don't like modern... or people who enjoy the original metalcore styles at the origin of the genre don't like the modern metalcore. Like, there's so 
much distinction even within the umbrella that it kind of makes the umbrella worthless to use. And New Wave is, I'm putting in that same area now, it's it's becoming a worthless term. It, it kind of means something, but it also means nothing. If Diva Destruction and Susie and the Banshees are in the same realm as the police and talking heads, it doesn't sound like a genre where I could necessarily say, oh, you like New Wave, check out this other New Wave, because it could be drastically different. And I think that's all I have to say on this one. I enjoyed this song. I think it's a very cool track, but much like a lot of the new wave we've checked out this week, Talking Heads Aside, it's rather simple musically, um, and a lot of the concepts in it are things that we have discussed every day this week. So I do feel like I'm undercutting Diva Destruction's analysis a little bit, but I'm kind of tired of repeating the same things over and over. Uh, so let's dive into some lyrics here, and rewriting history. Oh, that's peculiar. There we go. Uh, there's not a lot, as expected. It looks like we have two verses and a chorus. Oh, that's interesting. So, it didn't dawn on me. A lot of the stuff we've listened to this week has had layered vocals, especially with harmonization, uh, separation rhythmically, and call and response. There's been just a vocal dual vocal presence and we even saw it a little bit in Susie and the band she's near the end but not as a primary vocal format and we didn't hear it here either I wonder if this is one of the dif you know the the differentiating points between more of the original brighter poppier style of new wave and this gothy style of new wave was the reduction of vocals down to one Although they also did find a way to split it and get two. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a thing. Anyways, interesting. Uh, it just lines up with both of the goth ones. I just saw it and read The Last Straw, claiming all my credit and work as yours, to steal my spot and lie while you're gone, come and peel me off this ceiling. I mean, I get the, I get the general gist of this, right? Someone stole your credit and you're mad at them. Uh, there's a few lines in here that just, I saw it and read the last straw. Like, I think that means that I read the note and that was the last straw. It's a weird way to phrase that, though. And then come and peel me off the ceiling. Maybe that's like an 80s phrase I'm not aware of. Which is something that, you know, I don't really think about too often when we do these lyrical things. You know, I I was a teen in the 2000s. So I have like 20 years, give or take, of, uh, of lingo, slang, uh, and sort of understanding. And so when I read stuff that maybe is metaphorical based on lingo of the time, you know, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, whatever... 90s might be a bit too early for me. Um, you know, I, I, I get a pretty good gist of it, but, you know, there is definitely lines, you know, if, well, lines in older stuff that I don't get, not because they necessarily go over my head on an, I guess it technically is information, but I, I just don't understand the, the lingo of the time, right? The metaphor that might have been used in this five-year pocket of time. But eventually, the lyrics that make sense to me now are going to confuse somebody my age in 30 years. It's weird to think about. Anyways, rewriting history, always stealing me with your preemptive. Rewriting history, always stealing me with your preemptive. But it will backfire. One day they'll all see the real you and you'll sink to your fate. 
Very straightforward. You constantly steal from me. You rewrite history. This isn't the way things happened, but it's how you've written. You know, it's your story about it. And eventually, it you know, what goes around comes around. Give them an inch and they'll take it all. Creating monsters, trying takeovers. You'll fall hardest when the truth breaks out. Some call it spin control. I call it lies. Yeah, I mean, very straightforward. Uh, I'm curious if this is about something specific, uh, especially if it's in, uh, you know, the musical career here of Diva Destruction, if, um, you know, they've experienced this, this rewriting of history where maybe they did something and someone else took credit for it and they're trying to set the record straight. I don't know. Very straightforward track, though. Uh, I don't think it has anything necessarily to deal with thematically between the music and the lyrics. It feels like just a gothy new wave track with these lyrics on top of it. Um, yeah, I mean, this is... Those are my thoughts on Diva Destruction's rewriting history. That's where y'all come in. Did you enjoy this? Did you not? Do you have thoughts about the song or even just New Wave in general now that we've explored a, a full week of it? I know five songs is barely even dipping the tip of your toe into the pond of a genre, but it's a good start. And usually the community has a fantastic place for me to start with this stuff. So, uh, I, you know, I understand it's a small group, but I think it's. It, it, really, it helped me understand the genre a little bit. Did it help you understand the genre? Do you have thoughts? Anyways, put those comments down there. I'm rambling today. I don't know why. <laughs> Above the comment section is a description box, and in there is a link for Linktree, which takes you to this place right here. It's a menu with... It's a menu with... That guy right there. Links for everything related to the channel. Multiple ways to support the channel. A link to the Discord community. Uh, you can listen to my music. Check out what I've been listening. Nope, that doesn't. I gotta fix that. That's not there anymore. Uh, you can email me, all sorts of stuff. Go ahead and check it out. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, we have two creator requests coming in today, as usual. Uh, otherwise, we'll be back tomorrow with an album review. We're gonna be looking at uh, Epica. I wanted to say Nightwish, but I don't think it's Nightwish. Yeah, we're going to be checking out Epica tomorrow, I think. Anyways, it's another symphonic metal band. Um, full album on it. Sunday, we'll have the live stream for uh, the Patreons. Monday or Tuesday, that should be available for everyone else. And of course, Monday, we'll start next week's theme. So, a lot of stuff to look forward to in the next few days. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to. And have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.